feel like the universe is trying to tell you something and you're sitting here going, I'm listening. I don't know what you're trying to say, but I know you're trying to say something. Well, that is generally how I've been feeling lately. And it starts off with me seeing the symbols 1111 everywhere. Now, I'm not a huge woo-woo person. I'm like a woo and a half. So I don't know how I feel about symbolism and things like that, but I Googled it and Guru Google told me that the symbol means that I'm on the right path and the angels are telling me that something good's going to happen, but I'm on the right path. But of course, being my overthinking self, I'm like, well, what path are we talking about? Are we talking about my job, my marriage, my travel plans? Like, what path are we talking about? And that had not been clear to me right away. However, <laughs> because I'm a little forgetted, the universe had to give me extra pings to help me figure this out. And I'm going to share some of those today. And the pings that I'm talking about is not like voices off in the distance, but basically there are messages I'm hearing from various different inputs like class or podcast I might be listening to or any sort of input that I'm getting that generally because I have such a fast brain, I'm not really 100% absorbing or paying attention to. I'm kind of like always half listening to everything, right? But once in a while, my brain slows down when somebody's saying something profound and it just really hits home. And I'm like, oh, okay. So that's what I call ping. And lately I've been getting a lot of those. Like yesterday I was out on a walk when I saw the 1111 symbol on somebody's car and I was listening to a podcast where Kobe Bryant's basketball coach was talking about him and a few other basketball stars and how he would coach their greatness. And he was saying that these guys weren't like great at everything, but they knew their greatness and they took all of their energy to really double down and lean into what they knew to be great about themselves. And they didn't waste energy trying to be something that the world expected of them or that, you know, the rest of the team would expect of them. They just were who they were. They were clear on it and they put all of their energy into being that. And he said, Imagine what we could all be like and imagine what we could all accomplish if we put all of our energy into being who we really are. And that was just a moment where a light bulb started going off for me. Another thing that happened in terms of pangs really hit home to something else that's going on in my life right now. I know personally that I am on the road to burnout again. These cycles happen for me at least once every year or two years. And this year, I'm a little surprised this happening because I have so many tools and so much more knowledge and awareness about who I am, my brain, all of these things. And yet still, I feel myself moving into that cycle of burnout. I'm not there yet. So I wanted to share my experience with you in case that you are also on that verge, the precipice of burnout, and maybe this can save you from that. So... When I think about where I am right now in my career, because that's really where I think the burnout usually starts, I'm surprised because I do love what I'm doing. I love this new career that I'm in of ADHD coaching and creating content and being an educator around it. I mean, I'm not a guru. I don't know everything. Even though I've lived with this for 52 years, I only got a diagnosis you know, not that long ago. So I am learning and my whole ethos is to learn out loud and learn in a very sort of positive way so that we're learning about the hard pieces of ADHD, but we're also learning about what to do with it together. So I feel very passionate about that. And I do feel very strongly that I'm on the right path. And I feel like that's why the one, 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 ones are coming up for me. However, I'm also really tired. <laughs> and that only occurred to me like last month. I was like, I am exhausted and I feel myself burning out and I feel myself starting to drag my feet on things that I really like doing, like recording videos. And I had to take a minute to really think about what was going on for me and why that was coming up. And I'll have more to share with you on that later in the video, but I want to pause and this is kind of weird, but I'm going to read you a little story. Now, this is going to take about four or five minutes for me to read, so I want you to stick with me. And I want you to hear the story through the lens of your ADHD, if you have ADHD. If you don't, if you just have a very busy, tired brain or you're not doing what you should be doing in life, hear it through that lens. This was read to me by my instructor in class the other day, and it was one of those universal pings that literally hit me on the head. 
So this is an excerpt from a, a book called The Crossing of the Unknown Sea by David White. He is a poet, and he wrote this piece, and it's called Exhaustion, <laughs> apropos. And I just want you to hear it and think about what rings true for you personally. Here we go. He was turning the pages of the Reich book with one hand and sipping a glass from the other. I ha had a second copy of the book, but it sat on my lap unopened. After the first sip of Cabernet, I felt as if I was in a deep well of fatigue. Looking up towards a tiny ellipse of light flickering on the surface, I felt as if the tiny light might disappear altogether and the waters flow over me if I didn't say something soon. I looked at Brother David, whose eyes had just lit up with the discovery of a poem to begin our evening. I heard him begin to read. He reads a little blurb in German. I'm not going to do that. I found the poem in my own book and read the opposing page, Robert Blythe's marvelous trans translation. This clumsy living that moves lumbering as if in ropes through what is not done reminds us of the awkward way of Juan walks. And to die, which is the letting go of the ground we stand on and cling to every day, is like the swan when he nervously lets himself down into the water which receives him gaily and which flows joyfully under and after him, wave after wave, while the swan unmoving and marvelously calm, is pleased to be carried each moment more fully grown, more like a king, further and further on. We're still in the story as I continue. I read the lines, seeing the image of the swan being born on the water so effortlessly and thought of my own days so full of will and effort. I look up at Brother David, the nearest thing I had to a truly wise person in my life, and found myself almost blurting, Brother David. He turned and faced me, following the spontaneous note of desperate sincerity, and simply waited. Tell me about exhaustion, he said, in the form of both a question and an assertion. You know that the antidote to exhaustion is not necessarily rest. The antidote to exhaustion is wholeheartedness. You are so tired through and through because a good half of what you're doing here in this organization has nothing to do with your true power or the place you have reached in your life. You are only half there and half there will kill you after a while. You need something to which you can give your full powers. You know what that is. I don't have to tell you. He didn't have to tell me. Brother David knew I wanted my work to be my poetry. You are like Reich Squan in his awkward waddling across the ground. The swan doesn't cure his awkwardness by beating himself on the back, by moving faster, or by trying to organize himself better. He does it by moving towards the elemental water where he belongs. It is the simple contact with the water that gives him the grace and presence. You have only to touch the elemental water in your own life, and it will transform everything. But you have to let yourself down into those waters from the ground on which you currently stand. And that can be hard, particularly if you think you might drown. You must do something heartfelt, and you must do it soon. Let go of this effort and let yourself down, however awkwardly, into the waters of the work you want to do for yourself. Your exhaustion is a form of inner fermentation. You are beginning, ever so slowly, he hesitated, to rot on the vine. So, what came up for you? Did you feel like the swan in that story, or did you feel like the man in that story who was simply exhausted, doing something that meant nothing to him, and he was dying on the vine? And the whole idea of being wholehearted, something that Brene Brown also talks about, is so true to our being, and that being half there will eventually kill you. So I share that story to provoke just some thought for yourself of where are you being half there in your life or in your journey. And even though what you're going towards might mean a lot to you, perhaps the way you're doing it 
isn't aligned to your energy or what you have to give to the world right now. And that's where it comes full circle for me. I know that I'm doing the work I need to do in the world, but I'm doing it in a way that is not aligned to my current level of energy. <laughs> and I have to shut out the gurus and the people that do it in a way that works for them and think about what works for me. I have to think about this through my ADHD lens. I'll tell you, the story of the swan is, I think, a really important one for those of us with ADHD, how we walk through the world with a little bit of clumsiness because the ground is not what we're built for. We are built for the water and we don't often see where the pond is and we just think we need to continue waddling along the ground. And that can be very hard for us and very awkward and take a lot of energy. Another analogy that I think is beautiful is being an orchid instead of a dandelion. And an orchid needs a really specific environment in which to thrive and be beautiful. And it is beautiful when it thrives. And a dandelion, I'm not suggesting that neurotypicals are weeds, but they're very hardy and they can thrive in a lot of different environments. And I'm not saying that they can thrive in any environment, but a dandelion can grow in a lot of, a lot of places and be a beautiful dandelion. So if you are an orchid and you really need a special environment to thrive and be your beautiful self, if you really do need to be in water as opposed to land, it's up to you to find out what that path is and you owe it to yourself to find it and dedicate yourself wholeheartedly to finding your pond. So with that said, when I look at my business, again, I know I'm doing the right thing, but I think I might be doing it in ways that are not aligned to the amount of energy that I have right now. So what I had to do was look at the various different areas of my business, first starting with what do I really love doing and what do I think is most important and what lights me up the most? And that's most definitely creating content. I love creating YouTube videos and I love creating podcasts. But lately I've been procrastinating and finding it harder to you know, get everything ready to go because the steps to actually creating content is sometimes challenging, especially for me as I looked at it closer and closer and closer, the barrier was getting ready for a video. You got to put on makeup and hair. And yeah, I could come on here looking like heck, but I don't know why you would want to look at that. <laughs> so I don't mind putting on makeup, but lately I've struggled with my hair to be fully transparent. I've always had very, very fine hair. And then after COVID and getting this Hashimoto's, my hair has continued to just get finer and there's less of it. And it really makes me feel hesitant to come on my camera and talk. So. You are looking at me in my fondest glory of a wig. <laughs> I thought, how can I do this in a way where it's not going to prevent me from doing what it is I want to do? And I follow a gal on Instagram who shares beautiful wigs and she looks amazing in them. And she has really, for me, uh, normalized the idea of wearing alternative hair because I've always had in my mind, well, that's for people that are going through chemotherapy and it's a wonderful alternative for them so they don't you know, have to be without hair. But I never thought it can be for anybody who's dealing with hair loss or anybody who just doesn't want to have to go through putting their hair together every day. So she normalized that for me and made it okay. I mean, it was always okay, but you know what I mean? We have these stories we tell ourselves that prevent us from looking for solutions to moving forward in a way that we really want to move forward in. So I share all of that. First to say that, yes, this is a wig and a few of you have commented on how my, my hair looks beautiful. I appreciate the compliment. It's actually not my hair, but I did pay for it. So let's call it my hair. And I encourage you to use that same tool in your life to think about what lights me up. What is it that I really want to do? Why am I not doing it? What are the barriers to me doing it? And how can I get around that? And let go of maybe some of the stories of how I think it needs to be done so that I can do it in a way that works for me, my energy, my brain, what's going on in my world, and then really move forward, creating that environment where I can thrive as the swan in the water and the orchid in the beautiful soil. So that's what I have for you this week, guys. I hope that this was not too esoteric. <laughs> I hope there was something you could take away from that whole story of the swan. And I just want you guys to know, I think you're all swans and I think you're all beautiful orchids and I want us all to live and thrive as well as dandelions do. On that note, take care and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.